Now, Human says, I don't want you to guard the dog. The dog still thinks, is there a possibility? See, you're still thinking maybe here and there about going out. How old is she? Two, three. Two, three years old. Yeah, it's way too old to be disobeying like that in those little, those little moments. See, that's better. Still thinking about it. Even though a human clearly said, I don't want you to do it. That should be it. You know, I say I don't know how you do it, that should be it. So the dog has got a way of getting things that she wanted, even after being told no the first time. Somebody has given in. They say no, they say no, they say no, then they give in. They say no, they say no, they say no, then they give in. That's why after you say no, there's still an opportunity. Just maybe. simply practicing it, it, there's three elements at play here there's a resource that the dog wants and then there's the dog and then there's me saying don't go after that thing that you want don't go do the thing that you want to do right now that's something that people need to practice with their dogs we need to be able to, to set a boundary verbally no don't do that and then the dog says okay and just completely disengages if you don't have that, then you don't have control. And if you don't have control, well, you run into problems. It comes down to anything. Right now, she wants to go out the door. I said no. It, it's as simple as having a dog. You know, that's why people have their dog wait for food. That's where that concept came from. Because you're trying to say, even when you really badly want something, if I say not right now, or if I say no, you can't have it. So we practice it with having them wait for food. We practice it with having them wait at thresholds. We practice it with having them on place while, while there's t uh, enticing triggers around, around them. You know, all the dogs playing, people playing, squeaky toys, things that they want to go do. This isn't to be mean. This is to, to teach the dog that you have to have permission to go get the things that you want. They have to have a permission-based a, a permission lifestyle. They have to have respect for their handlers and for their owners. And if they don't, then you run into problems and then when they get into a room with somebody that says no, and there's consequences if you try to break that, stress, right? Because this guy right here, he was told no. He was told no and stay on the couch. And he's like, okay. He wasn't always like that either though, all right? He wasn't always this calm in the face of somebody giving boundaries and following authority. But now he's so used to it Years later, he just, this is what he looks like when he was told no and told to go on the couch. I tell her no and I put her on place. And he, <laughs> what does that tell you? Okay, so the dog, I, you know, I have a saying around here, the dog never lies. What that tells me is that she's not used to that level of authority. That's what that tells me. She doesn't know how to handle it. It's stressing her out. So that's not good. So the, the way you get rid of that is you use it more. You do it more every day. And I don't mean when you feel like it. I mean every interaction with the dog, you're leading. Okay? With a dog like her, who, who, has, who can potentially be dangerous, and she has been dangerous, she hasn't had any serious injuries to people with the she? Luckily, but there's been moments, there's been snapping, there's been, even here I see her thinking about it. Thinking about it. That should have been instilled with her at a young age, when she was first imprinted on by a human, that that is not even an option. Because it didn't happen, now we're dealing with an adult dog who thinks it's an option. Not only are we dealing with an adult dog, we're dealing with a Connie Corso, which means powerful breed. So, and stubborn, whatever comes along with the breed. 
So the way we remedy this is we take control, we lead, we say everything you do from the minute you wake up to the minute you go to bed, you do what I say. Either you, you do a command that I tell you to do, or you listen to me when I say no. Here's the system, here's the consequences, here's the rewards that are involved, here's how this all works. And we put you on this regimen for three to four months. It cleans things up, it gains respect, it calms the dog down, the stress goes away, the confidence goes up because they understand their life, they understand their world, they understand their place, and then we can start to ease up. But if we never do this, the dog doesn't get better. There's no magic pill, right? There's no, you send them to Josh and Julie and, and we have some type of magic wand, and then they're done and they go home and they're fixed forever. Dogs would change. They change depending on their company, they change depending on their environment. That's why when dogs leave here, if they go home and give their owner a hard time, they come back here, they don't do it. They don't give us a hard time because they recognize the walls, they recognize the company, they know where they're at, just like, a, just like a child. You know, the child will go to grandma and grandpa's and be a little bit more, a little, a little devil, right? And then come home and hopefully change his behavior when he's around his parents. They change their behavior based on who they're around and where they are. And if your house has the association of, I do whatever I want, and you have the association of, all you are is a resource dispenser, you know, you give me food, you let me outside, you do all these things, but you're not a leader, and you're not somebody I respect, and you're not somebody who I am slightly concerned about upsetting. That's something that people miss. I want my dogs, when I walk in the room, to be like, oh, he's in here. Let's, it's like the cop behind you when you're driving. You'd be like, oh, there's, there's a cop behind me. Make sure that everything's seatbelts on, going the speed limit. When I had, walk into the room, I want my dogs to feel that way. Oh, the cop's behind me. Let me be on my best behavior. Not, Josh is here. Let's be complete goofballs and throw all the rules away. Now, if I offer that and they say, oh my God, he's offering me to play right now. Yes, this means we can be goofy. They understand that we can be goofy and we can have fun, but they still have that respect. So that as soon as I say, we're done, we're done, okay? So we take control of the dog's day. We create what we call a default day, which is the day that we're gonna repeat over and over and over again. We'll shake it up here and there. If you have a day off on the weekend, you wanna go do something different with your dog, that's great. But on this regimen, we have a default day. You know, you're sleeping in the kennel on that. Okay, no, no extra privileges like sleeping in the bed, obviously, all right? As soon as that dog comes out, it starts at the kennel. We open up the kennel door, they can't come out until we say, right? We put our tools on, so we have control. As soon as they come out of that kennel door, it's, it's, it's constant command. It's, it's into a heel, it's to the door, it's sit. If you wait until you say you can go potty, then it's a recall to get you back to me, then it's a sit, then it's a heel to the place bed, then you wait, I go get breakfast, and then I come get you, and then I heel you to the door, and then I put you in a sit, and then we heel around the block, I put you in a sit, I release you to go potty, I recall you back, I put you in a heel, constant command, I'm telling you what to do. And if at any point in time you say, I don't want to, correction. That's not how this works, living with me. You do what I say. And if you do, everything's okay. If you try to go against the grain, this is what happens, okay? And then a dog, what they do is they fall in line. They, they conform, <laughs> they, they learn to, they're the most adaptable creatures, man. They'll, they'll adapt to you and to your lifestyle. And they'll be happy to do so after they get over what we call the hump, which is them being like, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, I don't wanna. And then finally like, okay, it's not worth saying I don't wanna. And they go with the groove. And what they end up realizing in time is life's better listening to their owner. Because now, because they're listening so well, you're like, why don't we bring the dog out to dinner? Why don't we bring the dog for a hike? Because she's been doing so well, let's do things with her. And then life gets good for everybody. But we have some heavy lifting to do. There's always heavy lifting to do with a dog anyway because you have to raise them and raising a dog is uh, time consuming, energy drain, draining. You, you know, you gotta, you gotta be educated, you gotta learn things. Uh, it, it's, it's quite a process. But let's say we do it wrong, you know, which is often the case. Wrong being my opinion, meaning by the time the dog's two, they're not listening. They're, they're, they're not consistently listening. They're consistently not listening, is what I'm trying to say. They're hard to live with. Uh, this, this is the result of bad, raising, uh, bad upbringing, right? They didn't, have, they didn't get the right things instilled in them young. 
right? It was just too much fun, too much play early. And then when they get older, it's like, oh my God, rather than instilling all the stuff that you need to, to create a well-behaved adult dog, we just enjoyed the puppy so much, uh, we forgot about all the, the listening discipline stuff. And then we get a dog who's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven 10, 11 years old, and they're complete brats with teeth. And some of them are really willing to use it, and some of them really develop really powerful and mean attitudes. She's somewhere in the middle. She's still insecure about using her teeth, luckily. But it doesn't mean she won't bite. We've seen it when she gets in a certain space. But what I'm really concerned about is this state of mind right here. This is stress, man. This is stress. And so I would like to see her calm, confident, under the control of a human, and living her life as her best self. And the only way we can get that is to start taking control. Okay? Here's the system. I ask you to do something. You don't do it. Here's a correction. Simple as that. Repeat. Three to four months. Clean this stuff up. And then we can move on and everybody's happy. Because, like I said, here's a dog who's a good example. He was the same way. Maybe, probably worse than her. I would say that he was worse. He was, he was dog reactive. He was tearing up the house. He was peeing in the house. Growling was, at me. He was growling at his owner to, when she asked him to get off the couch. He snapped at me when I first met him. This is a dog who is now easy to live with. I can probably say, I don't even have to worry about this guy on a daily basis. He knows the drill, thanks to the default day, right? And if we shake things up and do something special, he does. He knows that that doesn't mean that's the norm now, because we have a day that we re repeat with him based on our needs and his needs, but mainly our needs, and he gets it. And you know what? He's happy with it because there's enough things, there's enough like beats throughout the day where he's getting to do things that he wants to do. We're not expecting him to sit in the kennel 24 seven, right? He, there's, there, there's parts of his day that he looks forward to, but, the, but until they come, you need to go relax, right? And he does it on his own now. So we got a week with, with Blue. Uh, the whole time I asked her not to come out here and she wants to come out here, so this is good, right? She doesn't care about me right now, so this doesn't mean as much, but as time goes on, if I were to do the, the most of the training, which Julia will be, uh, this is going, this little pet here is going to be worth a million bucks, okay? Because the bond, the, the bond really becomes very powerful when you train like this, okay? And you'll actually put her mind at ease, okay? Um, I know Blue from, from about a year ago or more. This dog has a lot of potential, but I do know that without um, consistent structure and consequences for breaking that structure, she can be handled. She can be handled. So she's only like two or three. Let's turn her around, let's get her in a good space and, and have her live the best life she can possibly live without being stressed. She shouldn't be stressed right now. She, if she's an adult dog and somebody says, don't go out the door, she shouldn't be stressed, you know? It's, it's not what I would call healthy. <laughs> so, uh, hey, Ribs, don't go out the door, right? See what I mean? Okay. But let me tell you, he would have been doing the same thing when we first started this stuff. He would have been drooling, stressed out. You put a piece of food in front of him, you tell him he can't have it, shaking, you know? Um, that's how he started too. So it's normal to start this way when you start like, it's kind of rehab to be honest with you. It's, uh, you know, these, these dogs are used to doing what they want when they want. And when they can't, it's just mind-bogglingly stressful sometimes for them. Good girl. Break. We have to build trust too, okay? We are, a, we're, we're balanced dog trainers and I really believe in building trust and respect simultaneously, okay? So I want her to trust me. Uh, you know, I want her to be able to do a trust fall with me. Just fall backwards and know I'm going to catch her. As well as respect me. And so we need to catch that, that trust up too because that's going to really make her at ease. So if I say to do something that she's unsure of, or if I put her in a situation that she's unsure of, she can lean on me and say, well, I trust him because he's never put me in this situation. Or, uh, or we've been in situations that he's, he's had my back and things like this. So I'm going to build trust with her just simply through, you know, giving affection at the right time. Can, can build trust and respect. If I 
if I make her work for her affection, it becomes more valuable, okay? She, she sees me as a very valuable resource, just my pet. She's just, oh my God, I love that, right? And even dogs who don't like to affection generally when they come here, by the time they leave, oh my God, I love it when you touch me because they really have to work for it and it's the only resource we're giving them. Here and there we'll use food, but for the most part, that little interaction, that praise and that, and that, and that little pat on the head of good job is super complementary to the no and correction that we give for, for the mistakes. So that's why it works. There's contrast. It's no or very good job. There's not this maybe. Everything's just maybe, right? Or everything's good, right? There's no, don't do that. Okay, good job. Now good becomes powerful. Now it becomes meaningful. So it doesn't know. They complement each other. There's contrast there. If you live in the gray area too much, then your dog's kind of just... There's not really any leadership there. There's not clarity, right? We want black and white. 